Here I have a scan off of a clay model. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to check the scan out, see how clean it is, tool marks, that type of thing. So I'm going to go into uh, properties here, and under properties you'll notice that by default it's set to smooth. I want to look at triangles, I want to look at it flat, and if you really want to you can see free edges, non-manifold edges, and vertexes. This just gives you a pretty good indication of how good the data is. You can see the yellow line is the free edge, and then this just wraps around. You see uh, a little bit of work going on down here. This could be uh, tool marks or some odd thing going on with the scanner. Uh, you can see that there's uh, some multiple uh, curvature surfaces all meeting in one spot. So this may reflect in how we actually design this part. Uh, this the waterfall surface over here looks pretty clean. So let me just start out with that in this example and show you what I would basically do to get something like this. Now, um, with this, uh, I do like to use uh, curves to basically drive my initial shape. And then once I have my curve drawn in, in this case the center curve, I like to go in and use uh, control points to modify a surface built off of that curve. This is just one way to go about doing this. Uh, this isn't the only way, this is just one way, quick easy way that I've learned over time that allows you to uh, make uh, surfaces nice and, and smooth and quick and easy. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a curve through this edge and one way you can do that is I'm just going to go ZX plane once I have my ZX plane, you'll notice that this is the edge that I want to work off of. So ZX plane is my privileged plane. So what does that allow me to do? Well, I can come in. Let me uh, line this up. I can now come in off of that edge and simply draw in a curve that mimics this edge. Pretty straightforward. Just get it kind of close. And then now once I have that shape captured the way that I want, let's do this. May need to add an additional row of control, another uh, control point, not another row, this is a curve, excuse my language. Okay, so there we go. Get this mighty close, and then you can sweeten it up and get it, get it to exactly where you want. Now that I have that in, I'm gonna go ahead and create an extrusion. This extrusion, off of this curve, go like this, there you go, pretty straightforward, hit OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I need to take this extrusion and I want it to go in the opposite direction, so I'll just uh, make this a little long, select OK. Now that I have all that in, you'll notice that I have my 3D curve, I'm just going to go ahead and hide that. And then I'm going to go into Digitize Shape Editor. And with my Digitize Shape Editor, I'm going to go in and let me go ahead and hide this real quick. I'm going to activate just a portion of this cloud. Whoops, I hit Import. I want to activate a portion of this cloud. Now, the portion of the cloud that I want to activate is obviously the portion that I'm working on. So I'm just going to simply do a polygonal trap. And this is going to go like this, up and over. Double click to finish this out. Good enough for me. I want the inside, select OK. Now that I have my trap, I'm going to hide and show my surface. I'm going to take this and I'm going to use uh, Freestyle to manipulate this surface. The way I'm going to manipulate the surface is I'm going to first put in what's called a distance analysis. I want to analyze this to here. And I don't necessarily care about seeing all the points. All I want really is my min-max. So I'll show that. There's my max condition. Now that I have my distance analysis put in, I can go into my control points. I'm going to select this. And I want my symmetry plane. What's my symmetry plane? Well, my ZX plane is my symmetry plane. And then now that I have that in there, I'm going to Im increase the amount of control points that I have. And here, I'll just go to, uh, we'll say local normals is fine. And I can now bring, whoops, I grabbed the wrong curve, the wrong control. Actually, and now I can start dragging this to get this mighty close 
to what I need. And as you can see, just like that, I'm already within eight mils of that surface. And because I'm using a symmetry function, I'm capturing what's going on across my midplane. So I know I'm building a perfectly smooth surface across my midplane. Now I know I'm going to need another row of control points in this direction, so I'll just turn that on. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go to a low attenuation. And the reason why I want to do that is, is because, plain and simple, uh, I'm getting really close. And because I'm really close, here I am within uh, s uh, six and a half mils, I need to start moving my control points a, a little less drastically. That way I'm not, I'm not manipulating these things all crazy like. So I can start pulling this up. And at this point, let's go to here, bring this in. As you can see, I can get this really close. Okay, so using this technique, you can see I've already got a surface within uh, less than uh, uh, five millimeters. And I would just go in there and, and just continue to do what I'm doing, tweaking it, pulling these control points, getting it closer, then massaging that surface to get to what we're gonna call good. All right, so here we go. Just gonna keep working this down. And as I get further and further along, you'll notice I get closer and closer to my desired shape. Now here, I'm just gonna bring this point out a little bit. And bring this one in a little bit. So just over a mil there, and then now I can use my mesh lines or I could use a uh, compass direction. Now if I look at my compass direction because of the way it's oriented, it's going to move basically laterally. So I'm going to come into my uh, compass and I can adjust this now. So the, the direction is being controlled by the Z of that compass. So now I can begin um, pulling this in directly in the Z. And again, if I need to add more control points, I can add more control points. There's nothing saying that I can't. So if I need to, I can come in here and um, I'm going into six. I'll go seven, eight. And then now I have a lot more control over what this surface is doing. Let me bring this in a little bit. So now I'm less than two mils off. And this is the flag you want. This is just based off of the original surface. So don't even don't even worry about that or the previous movement. And tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. I bring this down a little bit. And then I would just go massage this more and more and just keep going back and forth. And one of the things you need to do is you need to make sure that the surface that you're making looks good, it has nice flow lines on it. And as you can see, going across my center line, it is utterly perfect. Go back into control points, pick my surface. And again, you have to make sure you have your symmetry turned on. You wanna make sure you're going across the, the correct plane. And then again, you would just start tweaking this even more. Let me uh, go to attenuation, a little bit more attenuation, and drag this down a little bit. And as you can see, closer and closer to what good is. If you need to, you can use the uh, along the mesh lines. Maybe you need to accelerate this curvature, have it dive in a little bit more as we see here. 
There we go. And then back to, we'll go try surface normal here. And again, you just go back and forth until you get the shape that you want. And as you can see, it's perfect across center line. I have a nice surface going across. And then um, one of the things you may want to do is verify that the cloud, the scan that you're using is really, really clean. In this case, this is a fairly clean scan. So I would tweak this a bit more, maybe get this down to maybe a mil off, half a mil off or something like that. Just go back and forth and spend a few more minutes on it, which, um, uh, I think you guys get the point. But um, it, what, what you have now is one nice, big, broad, general surface across the center plane that gives you the shape that you want in a rather simplified, nice, clean surface. Now, the next video I'm going to make is uh, working across on the top and then eventually getting to the secondary or the blend. And the other thing that you may want to consider as well is in certain areas you may be cutting away the material. So I happen to know that eventually a taillight's going to go in here and you're going to eventually cut out that taillight. So this may be a perfectly acceptable condition because this may be slabbed out or over, over, uh, overbuilt. And with that, you may have uh, a scenario where a, a little bit more deviation along an edge is fine because that edge is eventually going to be cut away.